So hi friends, I'm back again with the topic fertilization. So today we are going to deal about the fertilization. So I hope you know about the term fertilization. The fertilization is the process of fusion of spermatozoa with the mature ovum. So in the last class we dealt uh, about the sperma, the structure of the spermatozoa as well as the structure of the mature ovum. So today we are going to deal about in detail about the fertilization. So fertilization is the process which involves the fusion of the male gamete and the female gamete. So that is literally known as fertilization. So as you know, the fertilization, the process that occurs in the ambulary part of the uterine tube. The uterine tube has got various part. The widest part is the, amb uh, the ambulary part where the fertilization will be taking place. And the fertilizable lifespan of oocyte ranges from 12 to 24 hours. So after, uh, so the oocyte can fertilize, that is the lifespan of the oocyte ranges from 12 to 24 hours, whereas the lifespan of the sperm is higher compared to the oocyte, that is about 48 to 72 hours, that is almost three days, whereas the oocyte, the fertilizable lifespan would be 12 to 24 hours. So now we will uh, go in detail what happens uh, for the fertilization to take place. So you know, in, during the inter, inter, uh, sexual intercourse, uh, when, when the male ejaculate, about hundreds of millions of sperm, you can imagine hundreds of millions of sperms will be deposited in the vagina at single ejaculation. And but among that, only thousand will be capacitated that it will enter the uterine tube. Okay. And among these thousands, only 300 to 500 will reach up to the ovum. So ovum is waiting for the sperm at the ampulla of the uterine tube. So during the ejaculation, almost hundreds of millions of sperms will be deposited in the vagina during one ejaculation. And among that, only thousands will be able to enter the uterine tube. And among that, only 300 to 500 will reach up to the ovum. Okay. The tubal transport is facilitated by muscular contraction and aspiration action of the uterine tube. So the tube, so uh, the sperms, almost 300 to 500 of the sperms has reached up to the ovum. So how it transport, how, how this uh, sperms are transported? So it is due to the tubal transport, which is aided by or helped by the muscular contraction. So the tube, uh, it has got muscular layer. So muscular contraction will be taken place. And so that's why, and even the uterine tube or fallopian tube has got small cilia, hair-like structures that will also help in the transportation of the sperm until the ovum. It takes only a few minutes for the sperm to reach the fallopian tube. So, as I said, I will just repeat once again. One, during one ejaculation, the sperms will be deposited in the vagina, about hundreds to millions of the sperms. And among that, thousands will be capacitated and will enter to the uterine tube. But among that, only 300 to 500 will reach the Ovum. So the transportation is by through the ciliary movement and the muscular contraction of the uterine tube and it takes only a few minutes for the sperm to enter the fallopian tube. So next we uh, move to the next slide. Now what happens? Contact and fusion of the gametes. So till now there, uh, there is no contact between the gametes. It has just reached up to the ovum, the sperm. So now what happens? The complete dissolution of the cells of the corona radiata occurs by the chemical action of the hyaluronidase liberated from the acrosomal cap of the hundreds of the sperm present at the site. So you know in the last class we dealt about the structure of the ovum. The outermost layer is known as corona radiata. So what happens as soon as the sperm reaches the ovum, when it touches the corona radiata, the corona radiata 
will st uh, what happens the sperm will release the hyaluronidase enzyme from the acrosomal cap and that will lead to the dissolution of the cells of the corona radiator so slowly the cells of the corona radiator will dissolve so that uh, how, that's that's how the sperm will enter the first layer okay so what happens in the sperm structure we said that in the head there will be a chromosomal cap from there uh, the hyaluridase enzyme will be liberated so this enzyme will liberate and then it will lead to the dissolution of the cells of the corona radiator now the now the next layer is sona pellucida after corona radiator the next layer is known as sona pellucida you just rewind uh, the uh, remind the class which i dealt in the previous so you just uh, go through that then you will get idea you can refresh your knowledge so the first uh, was corona radiator due to the hyaluridase enzyme the dissolution of the cells has taken place so that the sperm has under the corona radiator so next uh, hindrance is sona pellucida the penetration of the sona pellucida is facilitated by the release of hyaluridase from the agrosomal cap more than one sperm may penetrate the sona pellucida so as i said due to the this enzyme hyaluridase enzyme again the sona pellucida will be penetrated due to the release of hyaluridase en enzyme from this acrosomal cap so the pe sona pellucida is also been penetrated now more than one sperm may penetrate the sona pellucida now out of the sperm out of many sperm only one will be able to touch the ulema ulema is a plasma membrane of the oocyte so the innermost layer so out of many sperm more than we said that more than one sperm may penetrate the sona pellucida so among that only one sperm will be able to touch the ulema so as soon as soon after the sperm fusion the penetration of other sperm is prevented by the sona reaction or known as hardening and ulema block so i think i have discussed in the later uh, in the former class this thing that uh, there is a reaction that happens that is sona reaction or hardening so as soon as one sperm crosses the zona pellucida what happens uh, there will be some enzyme reaction and that will lead to the hardening of the sona pellucida so that no more sperm will enter the uh, ulama okay so it won't come inside the oocyte so this is due to the release of cortical granules by the exocytosis from the oocyte so that what happens there will be sonar reaction or hardening that's why only one sperm will be entered after the entrance of the first sperm the sonar reaction or hardening or ulama block will be happening so it will prevent the other sperm to enter into the oocyte <laughs> now what happens here there will be completion of the second meiotic division of the oocyte immediately follows each containing haploid number of chromosomes you know in oocyte and even the spermatocyte there are chromosomes so immediately so completion of the second meiotic division of the oocyte immediately follows so as soon as the second meiotic division of the oocyte take place there will be a haploid number of chromosomes so bigger one is female pronucleus and another will be polar body that already i have discussed in the former class that this polar body will be pushed back to the peripatline means now it doesn't have any uh, any uh, special features in the fertilization the polar body which is formed it will be gradually pushed to the peripatline space and then it will be degenerated so now here what is remaining female pronucleus so this female pronucleus is there in the oocyte now the spermatozoa which has entered into the oocyte for the fertilization that also contain a male pronucleus okay it contains 23x and 23y whereas in the female pronucleus there is only 23x so you just keep in mind so in the spermatozoa it has contained a ploid number of chromosome that is 23x and 23 by any one 23x or 23y whereas in female there is no any other option if they will contain only 23x so now what happens this male and female pronucleus they will unite at the center 
and there will be diploid number of chromosome that is 46. So in one case there may be 23x and 23x may fertilize that will lead to 46x chromosome, chromosome so that will be a female whereas if 23x and the spermatozoa was 23y so there will be fertilization there will be 46xy so that will lead to a male embryo understood. So, after the fertilization of male and female, fusion of male and female pronucleus, there will be a product that is, we will call it as zygote. Okay. So, the zygote which is formed after the fertilization, that will contain both the paternal and maternal genetic materials. Okay. So, the sex of the child is determined by the pattern of sex chromosome supplied by the spermatozoa. If the spermatozoa contain X, and female embryo will be formed but if it is contain a y chromosome then a male embryo will be formed containing 46 x y understood so next so here we are discussed about that the zygote has been formed now in the further slides we will be seeing what happens to the zygote in later hours or later days okay now this is in the next step what happens after the zygote formation there will be various mitotic division of the nucleus occurs by producing two blastomeres so here you can see a zygote was there which can which contains 46 x5 or 46 xx chromosome so now what happens it will undergo a mitotic division where in which there will be two blastomeres will be formed here you can see okay now what happens again this mitotic division will be continued the two cell stage is reached approximately 30 hours after fertilization so after the formation of zygote this the blastomere will be formed approximately it will take approximately 30 hours okay now what happens so when a when a zygote is divided into two blastomeres the both will contain equal amount of cytoplasm and equal amount of chromosomes okay now what happens it will continue to divide by the binary divisions two will become four four will become eight eight will become 16 so a clusters of cells here you can see a clusters of cells are formed and this clusters of cells will resemble a fruit that is mulberry okay that's why we will call this clusters of cell as morula so this stage is known as this particular uh, stage we will call it as Morula. So, what happens after the zygote formation? It will undergo mitotic division. The blastomeres will be formed. Both the blastomeres will contain equal amount of cytoplasmic, uh, uh, equal volume of cytoplasm, and equal number of chromosomes. Again, this mitotic division will be continued. Uh, doubling binary division will be taking taking place 2 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 16 16 to 32 so that likewise it will be happening so a clusters of cells will be formed and that clusters of cells will resemble the fruit mulberry so that's why that is known as morula so this stage is known as morula now the morula after spending about three days in the uterine tube so as i said in the initial time the fertilization usually uh, take place in the ambulatory part of the uterine tube so now morula it will spend about three days in the uterine tube so when uh, uh, while this binary division is taking place the ooze at the fertilized side goat what is happening it is moving it is moving towards it is moving forward and and its destination is to reach to the uterine cavity so morula after spending about three days in the uterine tube it will enter the uterine cavity to the narrow uterine ostium it has got only one mm of diameter but it will move through the uterine tube and it will reach the uterine cavity so on the fourth day this binary division is taking place when it moves throughout the uterine tube it is continuing mitotic division so at class it will reach up to 64 cell stage okay so on the fourth day the binary division will uh, it will reach up to the 64 cell stage now as you know 
uh, for every cell there is an outer membrane there will be inner contents okay so the center central cell of the morula you can see the central cell the inside of this morula we will call it as inner cell mass okay the inner this is the inner cell mass that is a out uh, inside part the central cell of the morula and then here you can see some peripheral cells okay peripheral cell that will be calling it as outer cell mass so this inner cell mass later it will form the embryo the proper embryo whereas the outer cell mass it will form the protective and nutritive membrane for the embryo so you can imagine so already we said the corona radiator it was there that will be degenerated okay then the sauna pellucida still the sauna pellucida layer is there okay just imagine sauna pellucida is still th there inside the inner cell mass which later it will be converted into the embryo and the outer cell mass at the periphery there are several cells that will be forming the protective and nutritive membranes of the embryo so just here the outer layer outer membrane zona pellucida then outer cell mass that will be forming the protective and nutritive membrane of the embryo and here the inner one inner cell that is inner cell mass that will be forming the embryo okay i hope you are, you are getting it okay so just imagine a single cell stage it has undergone mitotic division 2 4 8 16 like by 64 cell stage at last it will be called as morula and this morula it contains of central mass and even the outer cell mass central mass that is inner cell mass and the outer periphery cells will be known as outer cell mass okay now next what happens while the morula remains free so now as i said it was traveling from the ambulary part throughout the uterine tube and now it has on the fourth day it has reached up to the uterine cavity now while the morula remains free in the uterine cavity on the fourth and fifth day it is covered by a film of mucus okay so now the morula is free in the uterine it has not got any attachment it is freely moving in the uterine cavity so meanwhile what happens the morula will be covered by a film of mucus a mucoid level layer will be covered all over the morula so what happens and you know in the sauna pellucida in the former class we studied the sauna pellucida has got different canals small small canals through which the nutrients will be transported so the fluid passes through the canaliculae of the sauna pellucida which separates the cells of the morula and is now termed blastocyst so what happens the morula is in the uterine cavity on the fourth and fifth day what happens it will be covered by a mucoid layer and through this mucoid layer through the sauna pellucida small canals this mucoid la layer the mucus will come inside it will enter into the morula so what happens all the cells were lying together the clusters of cells were there but now what happens a mucoid fluid has entered into the morula what happens the cells of the morula will separate okay that cell stage is known as blastocyst here you can see the muc here the cyst the fluid has been filled and the cells has been separated that is known as blastocyst so here you can see the outer cell layer that we will call it out call it as outer cell mass okay now this outer cell mass here we will call this outer cell mass another name that is known as tropoblast okay and the central mass which is the inner cell mass that we will call it as embryoblast from which the embryo will be formed the tropoblast layer from which the nutritive and uh, nutritive membrane will be formed for the baby okay so here the process from the development of morula to the development of the blastosis is known as blastulation so the morula is formed what happened when it reaches the uh, 
uterine cavity a film of or it, it will be covered by a film of mucus through the canaliculi of the sonar pellicula this mucus will enter into the uh, morula so what happens there will be a fluid fill fluid will be filled and the morula this all the cluster of cells will be separated so that process so morula has now became the blastocyst that process is known as blastulation now the cells on the outer side of the morula become the tropoblast and the inner cell is known as inner cell mass understood now the tropoblast again there will be a differentiation okay that will be formed into the placenta you know the nutritive part of the for the baby's placenta so the tropoblast differentiates into chorion or placenta in the inner cell mass into the embryo due to blastocyst enlargement what happens as the fluid is filled the mucus is being filled into the uh, blastocyst uh, morula now what happens this will be stretched the blastocyst will enlarge so no more sona pellicula can remain what happens it will stretch it will thin and gradually it will be disappear so there is no more sona pellicula the layer has gone disappeared the lysis of sona and escape of the embryo is called as zona hatching so i hope you have understood the morula it has reached the uterine cavity a film of mucus is covered so slowly through the sona canals what happens the mucus will enter into the morula so the cells will be separated now it will be known as blastocyst the form of the process of conversion of morula to the blastocyst is known as blastulation so now the outer cell mass that will be known as tropoblast which will be converted into the placenta whereas the inner cell mass will be converted into the embryo and the blastocyst will be increased it will enlarge so no longer zona pellicula can survive it will become uh, stretched thin and gradually it will disappear and the lysis of zona and escape of the embryo is known as zona hatching now here as i said you can see the tropoblast or the outer cell mass that will be converted into or that later will become the placenta and chorion tropoblast or outer cell mass will lead to the formation of placenta and the chorion that is a nutritive and supportive membrane of the for the baby okay whereas the inner cell mass or embryo blast that will later form into the embryo that is the baby the amnion layer and the umbilical cord nutritive membrane understood so i hope you have understood the tropoblast or outer cell mass that will later become the placenta and chorion whereas embryo blast or inner cell mass it will become the embryo amnion and umbilical cord so here whatever we discuss now here this it is uh, shown in this picture here you can see the day zero that is fertilization is happening now what happened the fertilization what happens the mitotic division will be formed the, the one cell stage has been converted into two cell stage you can see two cell stage then so the mitotic division is taking place but the the, the zygote is keeping on moving towards the uterine cavity you can see four cell stage three cell stage but it, it is not remaining in the same site it is moving okay now the day three morula now day four this morula will enter into the uterine cavity it is freely moving now what happens uh, a film of mucus a mucoid film will be formed then it will be converted into the blastocyst so blastocyst understood so that is zona hatching so there is no more zona pellucida here you can see there is zona pellucida layer here here everywhere you can see but here what happened there is no more zona pellucida this is the tropoblast and this is the what it is it is the inner cell mass or embryo blast that we will see later and this is the blastocyst the fluid filled cavity understood that is the cleavage and the blastocyst formation so this mitotic division that we will call it as cleavage formation and this is the blastocyst formation so that is about 
the fertilization, the main in general, what we have taught. Okay. Now what happens? This now still now till now the uh, blastocyst is freely moving. Okay. Now what happens? There is a process that happens that is implantation. Other synonyms are nidation and embedding. Okay. What happens? The implantation occurs in the endometrium of the anterior or posterior wall of the body near the fundus on the sixth day, which corresponds to the 20th day of a regular menstrual cycle. So till now, the blastocyst has been formed. The blastocyst is still freely moving. Now what happens? Slowly, a process, a, a thing will be happening that the process is known as implantation or nidation or embedding. What happens? In the uterus, at the near to the fundus, at the anterior or the posterior wall of the body or body near the fundus of the uterus, the implantation will be taking place. Okay, it will occur in the innermost layer of the uterus, that is endometrium, at the anterior or posterior wall of the body of the uterus. You know the uh, uterus is being divided into fundus body and cervix so implantation will be taken place in the body near to the fundus on the sixth day which corresponds to the 20th day of the regular menstrual cycle so now implantation is going to happen what it is going that is in simple term it is the blastus is going to stick into the uterus till now it has not it doesn't have any connection with the uterus, it's just it's lying in the uterine cavity. Now slowly the implantation process will take place. Now what happens, till now there you know the outer cell mass is known as trophoblast. Okay, now what happens, the trophoblast will proliferate and the trophoblast will form into a two layers. It will be differentiated into two layers. So the outer layer will be known as syncytotropoblast or syncytotropoblast, whereas the next to that there will be cytotropoblast. Okay, so what happens? The tropoblast, the proliferation, the cell growth will take place, and two layer of cells will be formed in the tropoblast. The outer layer will be known as syncytotropoblast or syncytotropoblast, and just next to that will be known as cytotropoblast okay now implantation begins in the decidua so during pregnancy the endometrium will be called as decidua so at the upper posterior wall the implantation will begin begin since cytotropoblast layer invades the decidua by forming finger-like projections called villae that make way into the decidua and spaces called lacunae that fill up with mother's blood. So what happens? In syncytotropoblast layer, the outermost layer, small finger-like structure will be formed, small villes. So why it is formed? because it need to penetrate the endometrium. Endometrium is a thick layer, okay? So in order to penetrate the endometrium layer to go inside, in the syncytotropoblast, small finger-like structure will be formed and slowly, slowly, it will invade the endometrium, invade the decidua, okay? It is making way into the decidua, understood? So that the villase has been, it has formed in the syncytotropoblast layer and villase, what it will, will, it will do? It will slowly penetrate. It is, uh, it is making its way into the endometrium. So now, so it is mother's, mother's body, isn't it? Mother's uterus. So what happens in the endometrium, there are various, there are blood vessels, isn't it? So when the villase is penetrating the uterine layer, that is the decidua, small blood vessels will be breaking down. Okay, that is fill up with the mother's blood. Understood. Syncytotropoblast. Another one important role of syncytotropoblast is the syncytotropoblast will produce, start producing a hormone that is known as human chorionic gonadotropin, that is HCG hormone. So this hormone is the one which help for the detection of pregnancy, even in the urine and even in the blood of the mother. And that's true. So this cytotropoblast is, uh, syncytotropoblast 
produces human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. Understood? So now the implantation has started. In this inside trophoblast, small finger like structure will be formed, which will lead to the penetration or it is it will make the way into the decidue of the mother so now it is penetrating into the decidue of the mother and small spaces blood spaces are formed that is known as lacunas okay now here you can see this is the one part of uterine uterus okay this is uh, you can i think you can understand understand through this image this is the blastosis it has not penetrated till now. You can see the inner cell mass. You can see the outer cell mass. This is the blastocyst. Okay. Now, it is freely moving. Now, what happens? You re here you can see a finger-like structure will form here. That will penetrate here. Small finger-like structure will be forming here. This is the endometrium of the mother's uterus. So it this what this this entire is the endometrium. Okay. So now it has to go inside this. So simply it cannot go. So what the syntype type of syncytotropoblast will form small villi villi structures and it will be penetrating into the going inside the endometrium. Here you can see. This is the mother's epithelium of the uterine endometrium. Then here you can see this we will see, we will discuss later what other changes is happening in this. Then here you can see this is the syncytotropoblast. And through this syncytotropoblast, villase will be formed and it will lead to the penetration. And this is the cytotropoblast. Understood? Now, what happens? The villes, okay. The villi begin to branch. I we uh, as we discussed just now that through in the inside of blast, the villes will be formed. So it will start branching. It contains blood vessels of the developing embryo. This will allow the gaseous exchange between the mother and embryo. So there is through this villes there will be the nutrients and all the gaseous exchange will be taking place. But there is no direct connection between the maternal blood and the embryo blood. Understood? So, just through the villase, there is exchange of gaseous gas. Simultaneously to implantation, embryo is developing from embryo blood. So, as, as it is penetrating into the endometrium, there are some changes that happens inside the inner cell mass. Okay, we just said about the outer cell mass. Uh, it will be uh, the cytotropoblast will be uh, tropoblast will become syncyto and cytotropoblast. Syncytotropoblast villase will be formed. It will lead to the penetration. Okay. Meanwhile, at the same time, there are some changes that are happening into the inner cell mass. That is, so slowly the embryo is embryo is developing from the embryo blast. Okay. The cells of this embryo blast is the other name for the inner cell mass. Okay, understood inner cell mass we can call it as even as embryo blast this embryo blast will again differentiate into two type of cells that's epiblast and hypoblast i think you are getting it tropoblast is divided into two syncytotropoblast and cytotropoblast the same like here in the inner cell mass that is embryo blast it will differentiate into two type of cells that is epiblast and hypoblast. Okay. Here you can see this blue color is epiblast and this is the hypoblast. The closest to the blast is this fluid field that is known as hypoblast and this is the epiblast which is closer to the tropoblast. Okay. The epiblast is closest, closest to the tropoblast and the hypoblast it is closest to the blastocyst. So uh, embryo blast has been differentiated into two types epiblast and hypoblast epiblast is close to the cytotropoblast whereas hypoblast is closest to the blastocyst now epiblast will give rise to cells of embryo as we said from the inner cell mass or from the embryo blast the embryo is formed so it, it is act acting the epiblast will give rise to the cells of embryo each layer of epiblast cells will form particular part of embryo. So from the epiblast, the entire embryo is formed. Different parts of embryo is being formed. 
Now, here the most important thing is the epiblast. In the epiblast, there are collect, a collection of cells are there. That is known as primitive streak. Okay, each layer of epiblast will form particular parts of embryo and these layers are collectively known as primitive streak that is around 15th day of the fertilization the embryo blast will form a primitive streak that is three layers of cells are formed that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm ectoderm will be the outer one mesoderm will be the middle one endoderm will be the inner one ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm this is the changes that happening into the epiblast cells okay so once again i will repeat tropoblast that is the outer cell mass it will proliferate and will become two layers that is in cyto and cytotropoblast whereas the embryoblast or the inner cell mass two layers of cell cell will be formed that is epiblast and hypoblast. Now we are talking about the epiblast. Epiblast, in the epiblast, a layer, a different layers of uh, cells are formed. Collectively, this three layer of cells, we will call it as primitive streaks. And through this primitive streak, the entire embryo is born. Okay, that is, this will become the different parts of the embryo. And this three primitive streak is known as ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, three layer of cells. Now, the primitive streak. Primitive streak includes ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Ectoderm, that is, you can say ecto is something related to the outer. So, what is outer of the baby or our, what is the outermost layer? That will be skin, hair, nails understood and including nervous system so ectoderm will lead to the formation of epidermis layer of the skin hair nails and nervous system whereas mesoderm that is the middle so muscles skeleton dermis layer of the skin connective tissue urogenital glands blood vessels blood and limb vessel limb cells endoderm innermost layer so epithelial lining of the digestive system, urinary system, respiratory system, glandular cells of organs such as liver and pancreas. So these are the part of a embryo which is formed from the primitive streaks. Okay, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Each of these layers will be forming each, each, each part of the embryo. Now, epiplast. So I said here, this is the tropoblast, okay, tropoblast, size, uh, sorry, cytotropoblast, okay. Now, as I said, the embryoblast, it will differentiate into epiblast and hypoblast. So, this is epiblast, this light blue color is known as epiblast, and this yellow is denoted as hypoblast. So you can see the hypoblast is surrounding the blastocyst, and here, some part of blastocyst is there and this the blue one is the epiblast so now this epiblast will separate from the tropoblast here you can see a small cavity is formed that is known as amniotic cavity and this amniotic cavity is derived from the ectoderm layer okay now the hypoblast this yellow it give rise to the extra embryonic structures like yolk sac okay so, from epiblast, the embryo is formed and which of the structure which supports the embryo, that will be formed from this hypoblast, okay. And this yolk sac, okay, this yolk sac will be serving as a protective and nutritive function. It, it has got that function, nutritive and protective function. It carries nutrients and oxygen to the embryo. Now, after birth, the yolk sac, is a vestigial structure and it will be in the at the base of the umbilical cord and it is known as vitelline duct okay so it no more it, it no more uh, doesn't have any function after the birth this yolk sac understood now here you can see once again what all the things we have discussed here you can see at the seven and a half days 
there will be it uh, this is the mother uterus okay, here it's it has got implantation it has reached into the mother's and mother's endometrium it is penetrated and ectoderm endoderm has been formed this is the blastosis this is the uterine lining okay tropoblast understood here um, sorry the amniotic cavity it is just enlarging okay now as it enlarges the size of this will be reduced okay in later class we will see that so slowly the embryo is being formed from this epiblast okay this blue color and this is the yolk sac this is the amniotic cavity okay. so when we do the usg at the earlier stage of pregnancy ultrasonography we will be we can see the yolk sac okay here you can see this is the uh, 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 morula and several the mitotic division has taken place and from the morula it will be become the blastosis this is the blastosis cavity this is the inner cell mass and this is the outer cell mass tropoblast and this tropoblast again here you can see you just see the changes what happens in the inner cell mass here what happens this blue color is epiblast and this is the hypoblast layer okay this is the yolk sac okay this is the amniotic cavity understood i hope you have understood here again, once again, the same thing. Sin cytotropoblast, cytotropoblast. This is the blastocyst. This is the yolk sac covering by the hypoblast. Then this is the amniotic sac surrounded by the ectoderm. This is the mesoderm inner. So ectoderm, the outer, the middle mesoderm. Then this is the endoderm. Here, okay later it will be formed like this okay so i'm just going to conclude this in symbol that uh, very very important thing but very simple okay so when the fertilization take place this is the end product when the fertilization take place the zygote will be formed what uh, what is fertilization fusion of the male and female gamete that will lead to this formation of the zygote and the zygote will undergo mitotic division a cluster of cells will be formed which resembles the fruit mulberry then it will be known as morula and this morula what happens uh, it uh, when it reaches the uh, cavity uterine cavity a film of mucus will be formed slowly the mucus will be coming inside to the morula so a fluid filled uh, cavity like this form that is known as blastosis the morula is converted into the blastosis that process is known as blastulation okay now in the blastosis two different type of cells outer cell that is known as tropoblast whereas the inner cell is known as embryoblast or inner cell mass now what happens later the tropoblast will again divided into it proliferate and forms cytotropoblast and since a sign cyto will be the outer which forms hcg hormone and even villase will be formed in this layer and this is cytotropoblast now what happens to the inner cell mass or embryoblast it again differentiated into two layer of cells epiblast and hypoblast epiblast again differentiate into primitive streaks which includes ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm Hypoblast, it will be formed in the yolk sac, which gives the nutrients to the developing embryo. I hope you have understood. So today we have discussed about the fertilization. So this is the only thing needed for the nursing student. Okay, so uh, we just, we have to know what is male gamete and female gamete. Male is spermatozoa and female is oocyte. So both will be after sexual intercourse what happens there will be fusion of this male and female gavate at the ambulary part of the uterine tube zygote will be formed then zygote will undergo different changes mitotic division two cell four cell eight cell 16 so like that the changes will be taking place and it will reach up to the 64 cell stage the morula and now at, by this time it has reaches to reached into the uterine cavity so that is known as blastocyst where the mucoid film will be penetrated inside this morula so cells are separated that process is known as blastulation blastocyst is formed so outer layer will be no, still uh, still uh, till now the sona pellucida is there okay the, uh, that layer is there so 
uh, slowly as the fluid fluid is increased what happens the the blastocyst will enlarge so the zona zona pellucida what it will become enlarged it will stretch and gradually it will disappear that is known as zona patching hatching sorry so blastocyst is formed then it will uh, differentiate into outer cell and inner cell mass inner cell mass is responsible for the formation of the embryo so through the epiblast embryo will be formed hypoblast and nutritive layer will be formed hypocell mass since cytotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast since cytotrophoblast forms the villus which help for the penetration penetrating into the maternal decidua then cytotrophoblast so that is about today's class i hope you have got idea about the fertilization so this much actually this at least this knowledge you should have for the fertilization being a nursing student even it is uh, anm or um, gm uh, general nursing students or it is bs bachelors or you are masters so this is enough for you to know about the fertilization okay now later in later class we will see about the formation of the placenta okay so i hope you have understood if you have any doubts or any uh, you want any more explanation kindly you uh, subscribe my youtube channel and you can uh, just pass a comment in the comment box okay thank you have a nice day thank you all the best